Another concept that lends itself well to the principle of mathematical induction, because it has a recursive definition, is the sum of a sequence. If you're not familiar with summation notation, let's take a minute to look at how this works. Suppose, for example, that you invest $1,000 in an investment account that is earning an annual interest rate of 2% compounded annually. You can show that the amount of interest earned in the, let's say, kth year is given by the formula 20 times 1.02 to the exponent k minus 1. This means that in the first year, the amount of interest you would earn is $20. In the second year, the amount of interest you would earn would be an additional 20 times $1.02, which is $20.40. In the third year, you would be earning an additional 20 times 1.02 to the exponent $2, which is about $20.81, and so on. A function like this that takes natural numbers as input is often called a sequence. And we have an alternate notation for sequences where instead of writing f of k, we simply put the input as a subscript. So we might write something like f subscript k. We would then say f subscript k, where k takes values in the natural numbers, is a sequence. This means, for example, F1 would be $20, which is the interest that you earn in the first year. F2 would be $20.40, which is the interest that you earn in the second year. F3 would be $20.81, which is the interest that you earn in the third year, and so on. Now, one question that we might ask from this is, how much interest are you earning overall? So, for example, what is the total amount of interest earned in the first three years? And to get this, of course, we would have to add all of these terms together. We would have to add F1 plus F2 plus F3, and that would give us the total amount of interest earned in the first three years. The way that we denote the sum of such a sequence is to use an uppercase Greek letter sigma. We then put the range of values that the input variable takes with the initial value at the bottom and the terminal value at the top. So in this case, it would be uppercase sigma, with k equals 1 at the bottom and k equals 3 at the top. And this notation simply represents the sum of all of the values in the sequence as the input ranges from 1 to 3. In other words, f1 plus f2 plus f3. We can define this summation notation for adding any number of terms in a sequence as follows. Given a sequence, f sub k, where k takes values in the natural numbers, we define the sum as k goes from 1 to 1 to just be the first term in the sequence, f1. From here, we can say that for any n in the natural numbers, the sum as k takes values from 1 to n plus 1 is defined to be the sum as k takes values from 1 to n of the sequence fk plus the n plus first value in the sequence, fn plus 1. Let's look at how this works with the sum from 1 to 3. Looking at our definition, the sum from 1 to 3 of our sequence fk would be defined to be the sum from 1 to 2 plus the third value in the sequence, which is f3. In turn, the sum from 1 to 2 is defined to be the sum from 1 to 1 plus the second value in the sequence, f2. So we now have, as a definition for the sum from 1 to 3, the sum from 1 to 1 plus f2 plus f3. Finally, the sum from 1 to 1 is defined explicitly to be just the first term in the sequence, which is f1. And so we have, as a definition for the sum from 1 to 3, f1 plus f2 plus f3. Now, one thing that we're often interested in is finding a closed formula for the sum of a sequence. In other words, if we want to sum a sequence from 1 up to, say, some natural number n, can we find a formula that expresses this sum simply as a function of n? In some cases, this can be very difficult or even impossible, but there are some sequences for which a closed form is fairly easy to find. Let's have a look at a few examples. Consider, for example, the sequence f of k equals k. In other words, f1 is 1, f2 is 2, f3 is 3, and so on. This means the sum of this sequence from 1 to n would be 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so on, all the way to n. The question is, can we get a closed form for the sum of this sequence? 
There is a little bit of a trick for this. Suppose we have a stack of blocks where we have one block at the top, two blocks in the second layer, three blocks in the third, four blocks in the fourth, and so on. If we stack the blocks in this way, then we can see that the total number of blocks will be the sum of our series f of k equals k, because we have k blocks in the kth layer. Now, if we happen to have two stacks of blocks like this, then we can see that they fit together nicely into a rectangle. And so we can count the total number of blocks just by looking at the area of the rectangle. We have n blocks across the top and n plus 1 blocks down the side. This means the total number of blocks, if we have two copies of our series, is n times n plus 1. And of course, this means the sum of our series will be half of that. Let's prove that this formula holds for all values of n in the natural numbers. To begin, we consider the set of those natural numbers for which our formula does hold. We now need to prove that this set contains the number 1 and is an inductive set. If we can do so, then the principle of mathematical induction will tell us that our formula holds for all natural numbers, because we'll have that all natural numbers belong to this set. Considering the case where n has a value of 1, we see on the left-hand side that we have the sum from 1 to 1 of the sequence f of k equals k. This is defined to be just the first term in the sequence, which in this case is the number 1. Now if we take the number 1 and multiply on the top and bottom by 2, we get 1 times 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which is n times n plus 1 divided by 2 when n has a value of 1. And so this proves that 1 is an element in the set A. Next, if we take an arbitrary value of n in the set A, we would have the sum as k takes values from 1 to n of the sequence f of k equals k, and we would know that that is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2 for this arbitrary value of n. We're trying to prove that the number n plus 1 is also in the set A, which means we're trying to prove that the sum of our sequence as k takes values from 1 to n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 times n plus 2 divided by 2. Now we know that the left-hand side of this equation that we're looking for, the sum as k takes values from 1 to n plus 1 of our sequence, is defined to be the sum as k takes values from 1 to n plus the n plus first term in our sequence. In this case, the n plus first term in our sequence is the number n plus 1. Now we already know that the sum from 1 to n of our sequence is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. This is because we know that n is already an element in our set, and so we have n times n plus 1 divided by 2 plus n plus 1. By getting a common denominator between these two terms, we have on the top n times n plus 1 plus 2 times n plus 1 divided by 2. Factoring out the term n plus 1 now gives us n plus 1 times n plus 2 on the top and 2 on the bottom, and this is exactly the formula that we're looking for. This proves that n plus 1 is an element in the set A, which means that the set A is an inductive set. The principle of mathematical induction then says that all natural number values are in the set A, which means this formula holds for all natural numbers A. For another example, let's look at the sequence f of k equals k squared. It's a little bit harder to figure out a formula for this sum, but it is possible. Imagine that we have built a pyramid out of blocks, with one block at the top, four blocks in the second layer, nine blocks in the third layer, 16 blocks in the fourth, and so on. Stacking the blocks in this way means that the total number of blocks in the pyramid will be the sum of our series, 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16, and so on. Now if we happen to have six copies of this pyramid, then we can see that there's a way to put these six pyramids together so that they form a nice rectangular box. You can see that the box is completely filled in all the way around. This is something you could try at home if you happen to have some Legos. With the six pyramids arranged in this way, we can easily calculate the total number of blocks just by looking at the volume of our rectangular box. Looking at the top, we see that the area of the base is n across the top times n plus 1 down the side. And looking at the side of the box, we see that the height is 2n plus 1. This means the total number of blocks, adding up all six of our pyramids, is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, which means the number of blocks in one pyramid is one-sixth of that. Let's prove that this formula holds for all values of n in the natural numbers. To begin, 
we consider the set A equal to those values of n for which our formula holds. We now have to prove that A is an inductive set that contains the number 1. If we can do so, then the principle of mathematical induction will tell us that all natural numbers are in our set, which means our formula holds for all values of n in the natural numbers. Considering the case where n has a value of 1, we see that the left-hand side is the sum as k goes from 1 to 1 of our sequence f of k equals k squared. This sum is defined to be simply the first term in our sequence, which is 1 squared which is, of course, just the number 1. We can express the number 1 as 6 divided by 6, which is 1 times 2 times 3 divided by 6, which gives us 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2 times 1 plus 1 divided by 6. And that is exactly the expression n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6 when n has a value of 1. This proves that the number 1 is in the set A. Next, we can take an arbitrary value of n that's in the set A. This means that for this arbitrary value of n, our formula holds, and so the sum as k takes values from 1 to n of the sequence f of k equals k squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. What we're trying to prove is that the number n plus 1 also belongs in the set A. In other words, we're trying to prove that the sum as k takes values from 1 to n plus 1 of the sequence f of k equals k squared is equal to n plus 1 times n plus 2 times 2 times n plus 1 plus 1, all divided by 6. Looking at the left-hand side of the equation that we're trying to prove, we see that the sum as k takes values from 1 to n plus 1 of our sequence is defined to be the sum as k takes values from 1 to n plus the n plus first term in the sequence. In this case, the n plus first term in the sequence is n plus 1 squared. Since we know that n is an element in A, we know that the sum as k takes values from 1 to n is equal to the expression n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Next, getting a common denominator, we have n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 plus 6 times n plus 1 squared, all divided by 6. Factoring out the common term n plus 1, and collecting like terms, we now have in the numerator n plus 1 times the expression 2n squared plus 7n plus 6. Factoring this expression gives us n plus 1 times n plus 2 times 2n plus 3. And this gives us exactly the expression that we're looking for. We've now shown that for an arbitrary value of n in the set A, n plus 1 is also in the set A. And so from the principle of mathematical induction, we know that A is an inductive set, which means A contains all of the natural numbers. The Swiss mathematician Jacob Bernoulli discovered in the late 1600s a general formula for all sums of polynomial expressions. This means closed form formulas are known for any sequence of the form k to the exponent m for some value of m. Proofs of Bernoulli's formulas for the sequence f of k equals k cubed and f of k equals k to the power 4 are left as exercises in the homework. Let's now consider an example where our sequence is an exponential function. Suppose our sequence is f of k equals a to the exponent k minus 1 for some non-zero real number a. The case where a is equal to 1 is a bit of a special case of this sequence, because when a has a value of 1, every term in the sequence is the same. 1 to the exponent k is just going to be equal to 1 for every value of k. And so our sequence becomes just 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times, and we very easily get an expression for the sum of the sequence, being the sum of the number 1 n times, which is of course the number n. On the other hand, when a is not 1, this becomes a little bit more complicated. When a is not 1, the first term in our sequence would be a to the exponent 0, which is 1. The second term in the sequence would be a to the exponent 1, which is a. The third term would be a squared, and so on, up to a to the exponent n minus 1. Now, an interesting thing happens if we multiply this sum by the number a. We get a plus a squared 
plus a cubed, and so on, up to a to the exponent n. If we were then to subtract the bottom expression from the top expression, almost every term would cancel out. All we would be left with is 1 minus a to the exponent n. And so what we seem to have is that our sum minus a times our sum should be equal to 1 minus a to the exponent n. Or in other words, our sum ought to be equal to 1 minus a to the exponent n divided by 1 minus a. Let's prove that this is true for all natural numbers n. To begin, we let a be an arbitrary real number with a not equal to 0 and a not equal to 1. We then consider the set of those natural numbers for which our formula does hold. We're going to try to prove that this set a is an inductive set that contains the number 1. If we can do so, then the principle of mathematical induction will tell us that all natural numbers are in the set a, which means our formula holds for all natural numbers. To show that the number 1 is in the set a, we can look at what happens when n has a value of 1. On the left hand side of this expression, we would have the sum, as k takes values from 1 to 1, of the sequence f of k equals a to the exponent k minus 1. And this of course is defined to just be the first term in the sequence, which will be a to the exponent 0. And that of course is just the number 1. Since a is not equal to 1, we know that 1 minus a is not equal to 0, and so we can write 1 as the expression 1 minus a divided by 1 minus a. And in the numerator, we can rewrite a as a to the exponent 1, which gives us 1 minus a to the exponent n divided by 1 minus a in the case where n has a value of 1. This proves that the number 1 is an element in the set a. Next, to show that a is an inductive set, we need to show that for every value of n that is in a, the number n plus 1 will also be in a. We begin by taking an arbitrary value of n that is assumed to be in the set a. This means that for this value of n, our formula holds, and so the sum as k takes values from 1 to n of the sequence f of k equals a to the exponent k minus 1 is equal to 1 minus a to the exponent n divided by 1 minus a. What we're trying to prove is that the number n plus 1 is in the set a. This means we're trying to prove that the sum, as k takes values from 1 to n plus 1 of our sequence, is equal to 1 minus a to the exponent n plus 1 divided by 1 minus a. The left-hand side of the equation we're trying to prove is, of course, defined to be the sum as k takes values from 1 to n of our sequence plus the n plus first term in our sequence. In this case, the n plus first term in our sequence is a to the exponent n. Since we know that n is already an element in the set a, we know that our formula holds for the number n. And so we know that the sum, as k takes values from 1 to n of our sequence, is given by the formula 1 minus a to the exponent n divided by 1 minus a. If we now get a common denominator between our two terms, we have in the numerator 1 minus a to the exponent n plus a to the exponent n minus a to the exponent n plus 1. Canceling out the a to the exponent n terms, we're left with 1 minus a to the exponent n plus 1 divided by 1 minus a, which is exactly the formula that we're looking for. This proves that the number n plus 1 is in the set a, which means that a is an inductive set. By the principle of mathematical induction, we now know that all natural numbers are in the set a, which means our formula holds for all values of n in the natural numbers.